Greetings, mathematicians! I hope this video will find you. <coughs> if you're watching this, you've survived another day in fifth grade! Woohoo! Um, I'm gonna give myself a high five on that. Even though it was, it was a short day, it was a great day. We're getting into lesson 23. It's going to be wonderful. We're dividing! <laughs> Want to know what else is wonderful about Lesson 23? Quotients are getting bigger. Dividends, bigger. Divisors, bigger. So we're doing the same thing, but on a larger scale. Are you ready? Let's go. Sorry, guys. Uh, ready, hot shots? Let's take a look at this crazy Lesson 23. Um, so we're dividing three and four digit dividends. So inside the house, we're going to have one, two, three, or four digit dividends. We're still dividing by two di digit divisors. And our resulting quotients are going to be one, two, or three digit quotients. Reasoning about the decomposition of successive remainders in each place value. Wow, that means that we're going to take a look at um, sometimes just two place values in our div dividend at a time, and then we're going to be dropping our successive uh, numbers down. We were talking about in group, it's like dropping down the chimney, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And um, for some people that celebrate Christmas, not all of us, of course, uh, that just seems like a seasonal tie-in. But I'd like um, to challenge you guys to think of other stories that are going on here in this house, to, house of division. Some of us were, uh, well, I was saying that this could be a roof and there's people on the roof and uh, the divisor is the Amazon delivery person ringing the doorbell. So there's so many stories that we could tell here. Um, and I just feel like that's important because it kind of keeps us engaged. <coughs> at least me. Uh, okay, so something that I'm going to start doing in Lesson 23 is drawing a line of learning, separating kind of our division space from our other workspace. Because now, as the numbers are getting larger and larger, there's going to be lots more work going on over here, and I just want to make sure that it stays organized. So we're looking at 9,152 divided by... Sorry, that's a little... <laughs> Um, cricket, but that's okay. 29. Okay. So let's look at 29 and think about the fact that it's pretty close to 30. And we're just going to do some casual skip counting over here. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. That should do for now. So I don't have to look at this entire number. Let's just look at these first two place values or the largest place values so are the two place values to the left. And let's think about hmm, how many 29s fit into 91. Or since we rounded 29 to 30, let's think about how many 30s fit into 91. Well, let's see how close we can get. Here's one 30, two 30s, three 30s. Three 30s is 90. That's below 91 and that's super close. Um, so let's look at 29 times 3 and see where that puts us. I'm going to do this on the opposite side, on the right side of our line of learning. 9 times 3 is 27. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. Oh, good. So that is actually a really nice start. 29 times 3. Um, so we're looking at 3. Notice how I didn't leave a lot of room here for myself. Let's maybe zoom in here. So I'm putting my three right above that one, making sure I stay aligned, even though my roof is crooked. Three times 29, I already have that information. We're looking at 87. Everything's kind of tilted slightly. Now I need to look for the difference between 91 and 87. I'm going to have to do some unpacking here. 11 minus 7 is 4. We have 8 and 8. Okay, is 4 smaller than 29? Yes. Check. That means we can go ahead and bring down our 5. Now I'm going to zoom back out, use that um, skip counting. Now we're tra trying to figure out hmm, how many thir approximately how many 30 is going to 45. Well, it looks like I'm only going to be able to fit one because 29 times 2 
9 times 2 is 18. Bring our 1 over. 2 times 2 is 4. If 29 times 2 is 58, that is too many. So 1 is exactly where we need to be. 1 times 29, I think I could do that in my head, is 29. And as you guys can see, we'll be much more thoughtful in my next problem. We have to make sure things are aligned because now we have multiple lines with uh remainders or differences and we really need to make sure that we're keeping everything organized here. Now we're looking at the difference between 45 and 29. Again we're going to do some unbundling. 15 minus 9 is 6. 3 minus 2 is 1. Now we're going to do that check. Is 16 smaller than 29? Indeed. Because uh, this is smaller than 29 we can bring down our 2. And now it is not a 16 anymore, it's actually a 162. And let's look at how many, up 29, we rounded to 30. So let's look at about how many 30s we can fit into 162. So here's 130, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so let's see what 29 times 5 gets us. We're trying to get pretty close to 162. So 29 times 5 over here on the side. 5 times 9 is 45. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. Yeah, that looks like it's nice and close. So we're going to put our 5, we'll go all the way up, stay aligned right above the 2 that we dropped down. 5 times 29 we already know is 145. This is so... <laughs> Crooked. Goodness sakes, Miss Calamaris. Now we're looking at the difference between 162 and 145. My goodness, we have to unbundle again. 12 minus 5 is 7. 5 minus 4 is 1. And then we have our 1s. 29, or 17 less than 29. Indeed, we can rename that as our remainder. So our quotient, holy moly, is three digits, 315, remainder 17. Now we have to do that check step. I'm going to actually do our check step in another color. Um, check step, you guys, is our quotient, 315 times our divisor. So we're looking at 315 times 29 and we have tons and tons of practice in this triple digit and uh, double digit multiplication. 9 times 5 is 45. Bring our 4 over. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 4 is 13. Now we have 9 times 3 is 27 plus 1 is 28. We're going into our second row and this is a 20. 20 times 5. Let's think about 2 times 5 is 10, but that's not a 2, it's a 20. Oops, I did not mean to write 10, I meant to write 5, so I missed calendars. 2 times 5 is 10. That's not a 2, it's a 20 times 5 is 100. So let's be really thoughtful in how we handle this. I'm going to cross this out, we're done, we're done. We're done with you. So 2 times 5 is 10, but that's a 20 times 5, is, which is 100. So we have a 0, a 0, and then we're going to carry our 1. So within this division, we are getting uh, some practice with doing this tricky multiplication. Um, now we have 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then I have 2 times 3, which is 6. So I have two partial products. Let's go ahead and add those up. We have a 5, we have a 3, we have 11, and then this is a 9. Now we have to add our remainder to 9,135. Our remainder, remember, was 17. Um, goodness, 9,135 plus 17. Of course, we're hoping we get our dividend when we add this. 7 plus 5 is 12. And then we have a 5 and a 1 and a 9. Oh, yay. This is such good news. 9,152. 9,152. Our work here is complete. Okay, buds, we're just going to do one more problem here. Uh, 
this problem I thought was going to be some good practice for us. Um, so let's read this. When dividing 878 by 31, a student finds a quotient of 28 with a remainder of 11. If you don't know what this word means or this word, or even how to set this up correctly, this is probably very confusing to you. So I'm so happy that you guys have this academic language. Um, otherwise, this problem would be completely impossible. So way to go. I hear you guys practicing this academic language in class, and that is wonderful. Check this student's work and use this check to find the error in the solution. Okay, so we have um, 878, and we are dividing that by 31. This particular student found a quotient of 28 and the remainder is 11. So Eureka is telling us that we need to check the work and find the error. So Eureka is actually telling us that this is that is not the correct answer. So we are going to go ahead and seek out the correct answer and then we're going to do our work right beside this um, and hopefully we can find actually what's what the correct answer is. Not hopefully, we will find what the correct answer is indeed. And then um, maybe we can just do a little bit of reflection on our the student's work. Is that the green that I wanted? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up. And you guys, I'm going to be so... I'm not going to have a leaning tower of Pisa like I did in the last problem. I'm going to be very upright. Here we go. Notice I set up some workspace for myself over here. That little squiggle is going to bug me, so I will erase it. Okay, here we go. 870 divided by 31. Let's do some skip counting. I feel like we're seeing a lot of 30s, um, which I like because I feel like I'm really good at skip counting by 31. So, um, by 30, so good. In fact, look, I'm doing it while talking. Ta -da. Okay, so we'll have that there to guide us. We're looking at the first two digits first, hundreds place value and the ten tens place value. How many 31s can go into 87? Or we're rounding 31 to 30. Um, and let's think about how many 30s can fit into 87. So we have one, two, mm, 90 would be too much. So we're going to hang tight at two. Let's check out what 31 times two is over here in our workspace. We have a two and we have a six. Okay, so let's let's start there. I'm lining up uh, my two right above my seven because again, we're looking at 87. Two times 31, I already have that answer. And now we need to look for a difference. Seven minus two is five. Eight minus six is two. Ask ourselves, Sebastian, is 25 less than 31? Indeed it is. Now we can proceed with our next step, which means dropping that eight down. Now we're looking at 31 into 258, or 258 divided into 31 even groups. Let's round 31 to 30, as we have been, and let's think about how many 30s could fit into 258. And it looks like I'm going to have to do some more skip counting, because I don't have enough information there. Look at me go, so impressive. So, 258 is our magic number, so we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, and these are six thirties that fit into 180. Seven, eight. So I think eight is a reasonable place to go. We're looking at 30 into 258. 240 is fairly close. Let's look at 31 times eight and see what we get. So I have one, eight times one is eight, and then eight times three is 12. Four. Look at that, you guys. 248 and 258, pretty close. I like it. So 8 is going to be the next number in our quotient. I'm going to line up that 8 directly above this 8, which is the same 8 that we dropped down. Cool. 8 times 31. Well, I already have that right here. It's 248. And now we're looking at the difference between 258 and 248. Well, that's 10. Is 10 less than 31? Last time I checked, yes. So our remainder, my friends, is 10. Let's go ahead and do that check step 
quickly because it is so helpful. We are going to check this work. Oh, actually, <laughs> um, I forgot that we are actually looking at our friend's work over here. Our friend had the same quotient as we do, but a different remainder. So what it appears has happened is that somewhere down here when they were subtracting, um, they probably had, we don't have the student's work, so we can't be sure. It looks to me, at least my theory, and this isn't, again, necessarily the only thing that could have happened. It looks like when the, the student was finding the difference, this food student found the difference between 258 and 248 as 11, but we know that that difference is 10. So what we have here is a case of mistaken subtraction. So the error here is in the remainder. And we know that we find the remainder is actually the difference uh, that we're left with here at the very end. So as long as you can show that clearly, we're all good. Um, I have a phone call, so I'm just going to pause here. Guys, uh, that would have been a really awkward way to end the video. Um, so just one more thing before you go is secret word. Uh, secret word is going to be what just happened in my classroom or our classroom. Why did I have to end that previous video and run across the room? What was going on? Hopefully it's something that you heard. And I actually said, well, this is actually happening right now. That is a secret word. Explain why I had to cut that uh, last video a little short. Um, and I hope you guys have a great evening and cannot wait to see you on Thursday. See you next time.